Yes, thank you, Jeremy. I, I will touch on a few things. I know Bubba's already released a lot of information today, uh, but this morning we were informed that uh, our staff, uh, meaning our coaches and um, some of our staff, um, can come back to work on, on June 15th. Uh, we'll be tested on June 12th. Uh, what we will do at that time is, is we will have staff that uh, has to be in the building. Uh, that's We're calling them essential staff members uh, to do their job. And the non-essential, not meaning non-important, but non-essential to do their jobs can do their jobs from continue to do that probably through the summer. Um, so we will not have receptionists in the building. Uh, Melinda Anderson, my assistant, will not be in the building. She'll be working from home. There will not be any uh, visitors in the building. Uh, we will be working probably three days a week to start with for four hours a day. And, and we'll work that because we're, the, the purpose of, of starting this early for us is to make sure that our medical staff and our procedures can handle our team, our staff, and our, our coaches um, in a proper way so everybody stays healthy. Um, so uh, our players then will start being phased in uh, on the 12th of June. Uh, since we were told this morning, we, we haven't decided exactly how many numbers that will be, but it'll be smaller groups. Uh, it will not be the full 120. Uh, the medical people did not uh, feel good about bringing that many in on one day. Uh, they wanted to bring in smaller groups and then test those groups. So they'll be tested on the 12th. Uh, our staff is charged with determining which of the players are in that first group between now and, and uh, probably the end of next week or so, so we can start letting them prepare to come back on the 12th. Um, if a staff member is not essential to come to the office, they will not be tested. It will only be the staff members that are coming in the building that will be tested. The players will be tested uh, the first week they're here. If they have a positive test, they will be sent home for quarantine and then brought back afterwards. Um, if not, then they will work in smaller groups with Coach Hess in the weight room. Uh, he has been instructed by the NCAA that he can only work with them for, for medical purposes to make sure they're safe. Um, and then uh, they can have player-led workouts by themselves, but the meetings with their coaches, even though they're on campus, still have to be by Zoom at least through the end of June. So they, uh, they could come by and say hello to their coaches uh, after a workout, but they can have in-person football meetings. Those meetings still have to be in Zoom. Um, obviously, we, uh, we are working all the protocols with our medical staff in the building. We will be wearing masks, and players will be wearing masks uh, throughout the building when you're outside of your office. Um, so if we're in a, a staff meeting or in a, a, a team meeting, uh, we will be wearing masks. Uh, everybody will be um, working with social distancing. So we've got to relook at where the wide receiver room, who has a lot of players, their room's probably not big enough for them to meet. So they've got to refigure another room and make sure they've got the video and, and such that they can have their meetings. Uh, Stacy Searles will have to meet somewhere else. Uh, our staff meeting will be either limited or some will be in the staff meeting and some will be on, on Zoom. Um, players and, and coaches and staff will walk up steps. Uh, only people in the elevators will be people with a medical pass uh, because they only wanted two people on the elevators at a time right now. Uh, and that would put us in a position where we couldn't possibly get our team upstairs um, and in um, any form or fashion. We'll be spreading out and using probably three or four different dressing rooms as more players come in. And uh, as Bubba said this morning, we, we have a group coming in June 12th, another group coming in June 19th, and then a group coming in June 26th, and a group coming in on June 29th. And that should be our whole team by the time we get uh, to the end. Um, so our, our um, are we starting back to work? Yes. Uh, is this all about football? No, it's, it's to let uh, us and our medical staff know that we're keeping our staff and our players safe. 
and at the same time, uh, we will phase their workouts back in, and then hopefully we'll have everybody on campus by July the 1st, and they will uh, have a great month of July to, to work and eat and, and prepare to, to start practice. Um, we will encourage all of the players to stay in, the, in their bubble and, and not be out with people that haven't been tested and uh, because it's, it's really important that we all go by this protocol. We, we talked to them. I just had a team meeting. I just got off the phone. Um, we'll talk to them about honoring uh, people's differences. Some people aren't worried about the, uh, the virus. Some people think it's, it's nothing, it's just the flu and, and they don't wanna wear a mask. Well, we've asked all of ours to do what our doctors have told us to do because if there's one person that does feel like it's very important for everybody to wear a mask, then everybody should wear one. And, and we've got to honor that. People say, well, kids aren't gonna go by the social distancing rules and that, well, we, we have to. That, that's, the, that's what we've got to do to, to make sure that we stay safe and that football works. Um, Jeremy? All right, gang, you know the drill. Open up your participants window and throw your hand up and we'll kind of move through some of these. We'll start with Jacob Turner. Jacob, go ahead. You gotta unmute yourself, Jacob, for whatever. On, Jacob. You hear me now? My bad, my bad, coach. Um, just curious what the housing situation will be like for the players when they return. Obviously, I would assume if you have an apartment there, you could stay there. But what about the players who maybe are supposed to be in dorms and, and stuff like that? I'm sorry. That, that, that's one I missed. The, uh, the players that live on campus will be in Parker dorm for, for the first month, and they'll have single rooms. And, and then the players that live off campus will live in their off-campus housing. And Jacob, even to a point that part of looking at who comes in, that they'd like to bring in people who are living together. So when they test them together, they will be staying together and not bringing in two that are living together, then bringing another one from outside in because he could um, have the virus and, and infect the group as, as he comes in. So that, that is part of the reentry plan that the coaches are having to look at. Good, Jacob. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right. We'll go to Aaron. Aaron, go ahead. Yep. Hey, Mac. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit more about the parameters for how you're going to group players for this, you know, to bring them back in phases. What are going to be some of the factors you consider? You just mentioned, obviously, you'd like to bring guys that live together. But what else are you guys going to be looking at? Aaron, we, uh, we were told this morning we could do this. There's been some discussion over the last – 10 days about when, when do you do this? How many do you bring in? Uh, what do you do with them? Uh, then you've got the NCAA element of the rule interpretations that are changing really literally by the night. Last night we got one at 530 or something that changed. So we're, there's a whole lot of changes going through. So uh, to say that these situations are fluid would be a little ridiculous because there's so many unanswered questions. So our, our poor staff, I told, we met for about an hour, 15, hour and a half this morning, and I told them that, uh, talk to the players. Uh, who is better off here than they are at home? Who's having trouble eating at home that, that could get more nourishment here? Who doesn't have a place to work out at home? Um, so, so you'll be safer here. Um, so we're, we're looking at, the housing, but we're also looking at the individuals. Uh, I talked to probably 75 of our 85 scholarship players uh, on the phone, and I asked each one of them, are you concerned at all about coming back? Are you nervous? And, and they were 100% that we're so excited about coming back, can't wait. I think mom and dad ready to get rid of them, and they were ready to get rid of mom and dad. And they said that food bill is going to be a lot better for them at home, too. Um, but if, if one says, coach, I'm, I'm a little anxious, could I wait two weeks and see how it goes before I come back? That, that's easy. Then, then we tell him you, you can be on a second list or a third list. Um, but uh, it, it's difficult for us because there will be a perception with some of the players, if you're not on the first list, we don't care about you and you're, you're not a good player and all that. 
And that's not going to be the case. And I, I just spent 30 minutes with our team trying to explain that. And I'll look at the list Monday that they present to me and I'll have some hard questions for them, uh, meaning staff, um, but, but we're just going to have to do the best we can do and, and understand that by the end of the month, everybody on the team will be here. So we, we can finally see some, some hope and some direction and, and some excitement for the future. Any further, Aaron? No, I'm good. Thanks, Mac. Thanks, Aaron. All right, let's go to Dina. Dina. Hey, Coach. Hey, Dana. Hope how you're are you? Doing good. Doing great. Um, my my question is regarding kids, the players that possibly uh, have injuries, uh, medical issues. Uh, what's the plan for those? Are are will they be high on the list to come back early, or what's your plans on that? Dana, we've got to look at that phase of it, uh, and that would be determined by do they have great um, rehabilitation facilities, uh, a doctor, a trainer that they're working with at home and everything's working great. If it is, we probably wouldn't bring them back. Um, if they're anyway, we probably wouldn't bring them back because they'll have time to, to rehab. Um, or if, if they're not in a position where they can come back and, and uh, or, or where they can rehabilitate like they should at their own place, then we would really consider bringing them back. Same thing with the, uh, uh, the, the signees that did not come in early. Uh, since we had no spring practice, we've got to use our, our bowl practice as our spring practice. And our 13 early enrollees and our, our 12 guys that haven't been to campus yet, um, we're, we're going to have to catch up with them. So that's another part of this scenario with the coaches. Do you bring a young one in that you haven't seen at all, um, hadn't even been on campus, because the older ones are going to take care of themselves and, and be more prepared, or do you wait and just let the young ones come in at the end of June? So uh, all of those are things that we're having to really look at. And I'm sorry I can't answer these more, but, but they're, they're so fresh. And we wanted to, we told you we would tell you the first time we had any information and we're, we're just getting this information today. Any further, Dina? That's good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Charlie, where are you at? Right here. Uh, oh, it's, you, Mark. Oh. Oh, it's both of us. We're a unit. <laughs> We're a single organism. <laughs> I, I was uh, I was intrigued when you brought up that some folks uh, don't think it's a big deal that it's just the flu. Is that was that players who were having that uh, sense or coaches or do you think that's born out of just frustration that they want to get back and get back to playing football? I meant uh, you. I, I misspoke it. Uh, I meant in general. Oh, okay. We're, we're seeing every day protest and we're seeing people that think we should wear masks and people that think we shouldn't. We're seeing people that think we shouldn't go back to work and people that think this is ridiculous, we should go back to work. Well, we're, we're foolish if, if we're dealing with 200 to 250 people that some in our group, our football family, aren't going to have some of those feelings. And uh, I, I've talked to our staff repeatedly about if you've got any concerns, tell us, and, and we'll see if you can work from home remotely. And, and there'll be a point, like if you're an on the field coach, you obviously can't. So uh, then we'd have to figure out what that means. Um, I don't anticipate any of our staff, our coaches saying, I don't want to come back. They're all so excited. And I don't anticipate any of our players not wanting to come back because they're just the response I got was overwhelmingly positive and eager. I think the, the, the tough thing for us will be the ones in the first group will be more excited than the ones that are in the second or the third or the fourth because they have to wait. Uh, but uh, these young guys have watched TV every day. They, they know of all the unrest that we have in our country and the divide that we have uh, right now through the virus and, and thoughts on the virus. So I, I have to think that uh, their parents have opinions. I have to think that they have opinions. And, and that's one thing we always do is we talk about the elephant in the room and, and we want to make sure that if there's anything on their mind, we've discussed it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mike, you're up. Uh, Coach, thanks for taking some time with us. Really appreciate that. Thanks, um, Mike. 
that kind of segues into my question and that over the past month or so, we've talked about the health of the players, uh, health with fans re- returning. Um, I had some interesting conversations. I wanted to know, do you have concerns about you and your coach's health? Because when I look at you and even, you know, Coach Cutcliffe at Duke, you guys are in that, let's say, over 40 age bracket. Do you <laughs> personally have any health concerns? I, I call it in the experienced age bracket. That works. I think that that works too. Um, you know, I've been careful. I've been smart. Uh, Sally and I have been very careful where we go. We wipe down all the surfaces. We wash our hands. I've washed my hands so many times they're, they're wrinkled. Um, I've never used lotion on my hands. I'm going to have to start. Um, and, and we use the sanitizer every day. So, um, yeah, a package comes up outside. I'll, I'll open it and throw it away and wash everything down. And uh, but what I what I have come to believe, and and I've, w- I've probably watched this too closely because I'm responsible for so many people, and especially young people, that uh, we've got first responders that are out there that that never blinked. They're working so hard. We've got healthcare people that are are dealing day to day with people they know are sick, and have the virus. Uh, so uh, I have absolutely. Um, no question about coming back. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the players. Uh, I'm a hugger. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a put my arm around guys guy. Uh, so all that's going to have to change. I, I was uh, walking yesterday and a teenager stopped and said, coach, can I have a picture? I'll put my mask on. And I said, you don't want a picture with your mask on. So we took a social distancing selfie. Um, so we're, we're, life's changed and it's different and we're going to have to embrace the, the different. Uh, I will say too, that I've eaten better. I've lost weight. Uh, I'm probably in the best shape that I've been in maybe for 25 years. I'm walking three miles every day. Um, I'm, I'm checking all my measurables. And, uh, so I'm, I'm excited about going back to work and, um, any of us could get sick. Uh, but if, if we're going back to work, you guys have to work too. If, if we're going back to work, I'm going to be careful with you. I'm going to be careful with, with our players and our coaches. And, and um, I'm going to go back to work and do the best job that I can do. My leadership has never been more important than it is right now. And, and thank goodness we have hired a great staff. They've, uh, I told them the coaches and staff, they've been superstars over the last eight weeks. And and uh, they're, they're all excited about coming back, and, and nobody has questioned anything we've done. And uh, I've, I've treated them like I have you. I've tried to give them every bit of information that I have at any time, and, and I've asked their opinions of it. And, and uh, again, it's, it's fluid, and there's so many unknowns, but uh, I, I'm excited to get back to work. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jonathan Alexander, you're up. Mac, um, hey, hope all is well. Um, I, I'm wondering what my, uh, you know, through talking to, uh, I guess the Department of Health and Human Services, they say that they think sports like football and basketball will have to rethink how they operate. I'm wondering, have you all thought about how you all may um, alter the way you all do? certain football drills or have you all gotten that far or what will the first workouts look like? Jonathan, we, we are constantly thinking about it and, and we, we aren't there yet. Um, we do know that, uh, we, we talked a lot this morning since it's real that we're coming back now, um, uh, about our football drills out at practice. It's, it's easy to social distancing when you're standing next to each other. And I used to tell the players, I want you all together to talk about offensive line play at one time. Well, that, that's changed now. They're going to have to spread apart. And we're really leaning heavily on the, the medical uh, experts to tell us exactly what we can do and what we can't do. And, and I think they're looking at it the same way. Like I said, I, I was so careful and, and still are with all these surfaces. And they tell us last week they're not sure that that's as dangerous as they thought it was. Well, until they tell me it's 100% not dangerous, I'm going to wipe surfaces and, and wash my hands. Same thing with the doctors that, uh, uh, that will be telling us about practice. I, I thought maybe we don't have team meetings like we used to to start with. Uh, we could meet the team out on the field 
and put the message up on the jumbotron and I can talk to them out there. Maybe it's not as effective, but maybe it will be. Uh, because numbers in a group for a long time, more than 15 minutes or something that they're concerned about, um, players and coaches standing right next to each other for more than 15 minutes, they're concerned about. Uh, so there, there'll be a number of things like that that the doctors will help us with. There'll probably be some when we start uh, in shorts that they'll have recommendations of let's do this differently and let's do this differently. And, and I think uh, all of us are going to go through a learning process. And I think that's the biggest reason that uh, um, Bubba and the administration is, is uh, allowing us and really wanting us to bring these guys in early so we can start learning some of this stuff now and, and teaching the players that this is, this is real stuff. This is, you can't just act like it's nothing and, and hang out with your buddies as in, in close relationships. Now, are we going to have some players hug each other and high five? I, I'm, I am sure. I mean, and <clears throat> will the doctors feel good about that? I'm, who knows? So we're just going to have to look at all that stuff, Jonathan, and our whole lives, there's no playbook for this. So every minute of every day, we're, we're having to look differently at something and, and um, hopefully we'll get a vaccine. Hopefully we'll, we'll find some uh, different things to help the sick people, not even just a vaccine. Uh, but until we do, then we've just got to try to be smart as, as we can. Good, Jonathan. Jonathan, the other, other thing, I'm sorry, uh, Jeremy, that, that pr probably helped everybody. I've asked our coaches to evaluate um, the, the biggest position meeting as compared to a, a, a in your room position meeting. And, and um, what are the differences? And, and it's easy to say, well, they're just not the same. They're not in person. Well, that's true. But can you get done the same amount and be safer in a Zoom position meeting or near the same amount as you could uh, in a uh, position meeting. So we're, we're really, <clears throat> excuse me, we're really reevaluating all of those type things. All right, let's go to Ross. Ross Martin, you're up. There you go. Oh, Jerry. Yep. Hey, coach. Um, I was wondering, so the players come back, you know, all in place by July 1st. Is there going to be any football activity with coaches and staff outside of meetings? until preseason camp starts, y'all gonna have 10 days that serves like a spring practice or anything like that? What, Ross, what's the plan from July 1st until the start of August uh, of training camp? Again, we're all waiting on um, the NCAA oversight committee. And, and we're trying to, they, they haven't, uh, all activities are dead except weightlifting with Coach Hess until July 1st. And then hopefully there, there's been a proposed six week plan from the AFCA and from a lot of different conferences that has been sent to the NCAA to look at. And um, so we're, we're kind of waiting to see. I think that's the other thing. Probably they're wanting to see how the uh, phasing in goes or how the teams coming back to campus go with the workouts. Uh, but they will not let us have any in-person meetings uh, with these players at all, and they're only supposed to be involved in conditioning until at least July 1st. See, the other thing we've got to look at is now we're going to start school August 10th. We were going to start, start August the 18th. So since we're going to be having classes during preseason practice, should we be able to move preseason practice up a little bit so we have more time because the guys can't be doing preseason and get as much time as we did with class uh, that we had without class. So we're, we're looking at a number of those things now. And, and then you, I know you mentioned a little bit about strength and conditioning. How do you see that going in terms of uh, grouping and, and, and staying safe? And, and have you talked with Coach Hess about that plan? Is there any more details you can kind of give us on how you see that going once the players get here? We really haven't. The only thing I know is that we're going to do it in small groups. Okay. And I might have said this, but uh, every person that comes in the building will have their temperature taken every day. And if, if you do not feel good, you have a right that you don't have to come. And you can just say, I don't feel good. And you're excused. 
If your temperature is at a certain point, and I'm not sure what that point is, they will turn you away at the, at the door and not let you come in the building. So it's going to be very, very strict. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank you, Ross. All right, Andrea, you're up. Hey, Mac, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm wondering if you guys are going to be requiring the players to basically stay in the athletics bubble um, once they get back and try to limit the type of interaction they have with uh, folks who aren't either with them in the weight room or um, if they're off campus, one of their roommates? Andrew, they, they, they really are, and, and we really are. Um, is it realistic that players will not go out to eat or not meet somebody on the street or when we have 19,000 students come back that they'll have interaction with students? Um, you know, those are all things that, that everybody's trying to, to look at and study. What we are encouraging our players to do and it's why I've asked the staff to go exactly by the guidelines. We've encouraged our players to, to stay in the bubble as much as they can. That's why we're looking at who's rooming with who coming in on the first phase uh, and, and who will be in the dorms uh, in individual rooms and them not going home where they might could um, attract the virus and bring it back on campus where they're safe here. Because obviously if everybody is safe here, and no one is, is seeing any outside pressures, um, the, the likelihood of, of us having someone catch the virus is a lot less likely than if they go home on July the 4th and go to some parties. So that's what we've got to really look at. And right now we're encouraging our players. We've told them that if you are in the group that's asked to come back and you come back, we don't want you to go home for July 4th. We're all gonna stay here. Anything further, Andrew? That, that's good. That was my big follow-up was the fan, not being able to go home and maybe visit family um, if they had to. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the big question marks. We're asking them not to. And they've been with their family for the last two months, so they've probably had enough. I know Sally's ready for me to go. All right, we'll go to Isaac. Isaac, go ahead. Hold on a second. You got to get yourself unmuted here. Sorry. Yeah. Thought I had. There we go. Sorry, Coach. Thanks so much for taking time with us today. Appreciate it. Yes, Isaac. Um, thank you. You had, you had talked a little bit earlier about the shifts and of the students coming in and uh, when to bring back experience upperclassmen and when to bring back underclassmen as part of that. I'm curious how you think this truncated schedule is going to affect more veteran experienced teams around the country versus teams dominated by less experienced underclassmen? You would always think uh, that the more experienced teams would handle adversity better or change better. And you would think that some of our older players would understand if they're in a great position at home, they might need to come back. The problem we've got is all the guys want to come back and see their buddies. They, they want to get back to a routine. That's who they are. And, and they, they obviously some won't be as strong as they were when they left here for spring break. Some didn't get to eat as much. Some have lost weight. I mean, all of those things will, will affect certain players. And that's one of the, the confusing things that we've got to figure out here. Are we better off bringing older ones back and getting them ready to play? Or are we better off understanding the older ones are going to be in better shape and be stronger that had places to work out than the younger ones. So bring the younger ones in, but don't have the old ones upset that the young ones are coming back and you're not. Uh, it's a, it's a real morale issue. And it, it's something that we've got to do a great job, not only of choosing, but managing uh, how we explain it to the players. And I told them today, it has, it has nothing to do short term with who's a, a starter or a second teamer. Or it, it has to do with uh, learning how our medical staff can handle uh, COVID, learning how we're gonna keep staff and players safe and learning how to get you all really ready to go in July. Great. Thank you. All right. Hey, gang, just so you know, I, we can take a couple more, but I've got to get Coach off. He's got another thing coming up at four that he has to get prepared for. So 
Um, we'll go to Gregory here quick. Gregory, go ahead. Hey, Coach. It was a similar question along the lines um, of Isaac. With the grouping of players, the four separate groups, um, is there any kind of concern of the players that come early um, kind of getting advantage conditioning-wise um, since that's the only kind of things that y'all can do than the players that come in later? Uh, Gregory, there, there's uh, absolutely a concern. The, the other – situation that you have is nobody comes in until July 6th, then nobody ends up getting stronger. So that's why we've got to look at what is best for each individual situation. And, and since it's only a, a four week period, I don't know that there'd be such gains that if you're in the second group, instead of the first group, that four or five days of conditioning would make that much difference for you. If you're going to have eight weeks before you start practice. Um, so I, I, think, I think we're okay. Um, obviously the ones that come in that last week of June will be more concerned than the ones that come in the 15th. But from the 15th to, or the 12th to the 29th is really that, that, not that big a span of time. And, and if they're at home, they're probably able to work out, Greg, and, and uh, they probably are going to come in in good shape. In fact, it'll probably make them mad that they're not in the earlier group. And they'll come in with a chip on their shoulder and play better. Good, Gregory. Yeah, and, good. Yeah, and, and Gregory, I, I, the, here's the other thing that, that uh, I've looked at and struggled with some. It's the safety of bringing your team back now as compared to them not working out as well at home. And are they going to be ready to start practice in August? So – getting them back here, learning how to handle them in this bubble that we talked about, learning how to be safe with the virus to the best of our abilities, learning that if so, how we handle it, the protocol we would go by, um, as compared to not doing anything at home with some of them, because we have res total responsibility without control, uh, and at what point is it safe to leave them at home and you don't know what kind of condition they're going to come in and then you get soft tissue issues and, and injuries and, 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 and you put them in, in harm's way simply because they weren't prepared. That, that's been the, the balance of these two things I, I think the medical staff has been looking at as well. And just for clarification, um, the players that are coming back, there's, you're still going to be doing Zoom player meetings, even though that you will have players on campus. That is an, uh, an NCAA rule. I don't like it. I, I, I don't, I, I'm not I'm sure I understand why, because right now there's obviously people in America. So there are some players that have some depression issues or anxiety issues with all of this. And I'd a lot rather us be able to talk to them face to face. So I, I don't understand that. I, I don't know what kind of advantage you're, you're getting if everybody's getting to meet with them. Uh, but I do think, Gregory, that it also makes it less important for some to come back simply because we're, they'll have the same meetings at home that they're having here. It will only be conditioning will be the difference. Thank you. Thank you. All right, quickly, JB. Hey, Coach, thanks again uh, for taking out time for us. I just got a quick question as far as when you when this plan was first put in front of you, was there any sense of optimism or relief that, hey, we, we are going to have a football season and these are the necessary steps that we need to take? Uh, JB, we've been talking about it for the last week to 10 days, but didn't know what date. We didn't know what kind of groups. We, we didn't know that it would be approved. So... Uh, there's always some hesitation until you say, let's go. So this morning is the first time that uh, I have been given the okay to talk to our staff and our team about guys coming back. So I'm actually sitting here in my office looking out at Keenan Stadium and, and um, have some excitement. And the staff this morning, the, you know, when you're having a staff meeting and you're not sure you're going to play football, it's, it's hard to – and I'm saying – you know, get that game plan for Central Florida. And they said, yeah, we might not even be playing, man. It's kind of hard to get the game plan. So uh, now uh, coaches and players and I feel like we're going to play. We're getting prepared to play. And, and um, that was the, the meeting that, that they had a couple of questions. 
uh, like uh, will we be uh, afforded masks as, as players? And I said, yes. They asked a little bit about the test. But the, they didn't have many questions. I think they'll just be anxious now to know um, who's coming in with what group, and they want to get started. Thank you so much, Coach. Pleasure as always. Thanks, JB. All right, we'll go to the last one. Art, we got two minutes, so. Okay, hey, Mac, how you doing? Good, Art. Hey, um, Kevin said Art, in his... Art, Art's never asked a two-minute question, yeah. so let, let just uh, That's that. why I brought it up. And okay, Kevin said the other day that there'd be a quarantine dome on campus for anybody who tested positive. You mentioned sending kids home during training camp, but have, do you have a, is there going to be a quarantine center uh, once the season starts and somebody gets tested positive while, while school is going on? Yeah, the medical staff would be able to answer that much better than me, Art. What I, what I said or what I meant was that if someone came uh, within the next uh, four groups that come in and they tested positive, they would be sent back home to quarantine at home. After they get here and they're in school, they'll stay in school. And the way I do understand it is there will be an area that they would be quarantined for, for two weeks, 14 days. And even that gets a little confusing because in talking to the doctors, it depends on how long they have the virus, how much, how bad they have it. It could be shorter, it could be longer. So when we say a 14 day quarantine, I think all of that's just a general number, uh, but could be a little longer or could be shorter. Thank you, coach. Thank you. That's less than two minutes, Art. <laughs> that was a good one. Jeremy, we can't hear you. I'm talking to myself. Yes, that's right. Jeremy, you're in charge of this, and you, you haven't learned yet to get off of mute before you start talking. Well, I didn't want to talk over you. You were saying such a great thing. Yeah. So, gang, we appreciate it as always.